Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning I would like to extend a warm welcome to all those who have joined us online for worship. If you are joining for the very first time, I would like to say a special welcome to you. I hope today's experience will be a blessing to you and we look forward to have you join us again. Just a quick reminder, please remember to mute your phones or whatever device you are using once you have joined the service. To mute your phone, it's star six, and to unmute is the same star six. Those who are taking part in the service, please be ready to do so. And remember to unmute yourself if you were muted. Thanks for your understanding and cooperation. Our opening aim is M number 88, Maker in Whom We Live. And this will be rendered by Sister Yvonne Stuart Armour. Maker in whom we live, in whom we are and move, the glory, pour and praise receive, for thy creating love, let all the angels throng give thanks to God on high, while love repeats the joyful song and echoes to the sky. Incarnate deity, let all the ransomed race render in thanks their lives to thee for thy redeeming grace. The grace to sinners showed, ye heavenly choirs proclaim and cry salvation to our God. 
salvation to their land. Spirit of holy mud, let all thy saints adore thy sacred energy and bless thine heart renew in power. Not angel tongues can sell the love ecstatic height. The glorious joy unspeakable, the deity fixed sight. Eternal triune God, let all the host above, let all on earth be low record and dwell upon thy love. When heaven and earth are flood before thy glorious face, sing all the saints thy love hath made, thy everlasting praise. Amen. Amen. This is a day Amen. that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. And be glad in it. Glad in it. Let Amen. us come before our good God with our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, great and merciful God, who was and is and shall always be, we come together this morning, God, to praise you and to glorify you. You, God, you are deserving of all the praise, the honor, and the glory in the morning time, in the noon time, in the evening time, and the night time, and indeed all the time. So we come, God, collectively, and we come individually, for we know that in your presence is fullness of joy. We come, God, to extol you, to bless your holy name, for your praise inhabits our lips. And our souls, God, boast in you. For who is like you? None. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And in times like these, God, oh God, in times like these, and indeed all the time we need you. In times like these, God, and at all times we can't imagine what life would be without knowing you. In times like these, God, and in all our times, you are our refuge and you are our strength. So how, God, how can we not praise you today and worship you? Who is like you? Who can do for us, God, what you can do? And who will love us, God, as you love us? So come, Amen. mighty God, hear the thoughts of our hearts and receive the praises in our innermost being. And we ask God that we will decrease before your presence so you can have all of who we are. Keep our eyes and our hearts and our spirits centered on you. And we ask this in the incredible and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And let the people say, Amen. 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 Please join me with the, with the call to worship. You are the sore. Oh God, we are the seed. In you we live and have our being. You are the lover, O oh God, we are the beloved. In you we grow into creatures more beautiful than all the flowers of the garden. You are the healer, O oh God, we are the yield. In you we find all that we need. Come, let us worship our bountiful God. Now it's time for our praise offering. It will be done by Judy and Matt Bernie in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. 
Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Give my God the glory. Give my God the praise. Worship him, worship him. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Worship him, worship him. Give my God the glory. Give my God the praise, worship him, worship him. Come, let us worship the Lord, let's give him the praise. Indeed, he deserves all our praise and our glory. The prayer of confession, Holy One, caretaker of our souls. We know that life in the spirit awaits us, but the allure of things keep us tied to hurtly passions. Victorious living and peace are within our grasp, but the seduction of control and having things our way lead us off our, your path to pain and loss. You have created us to soar, but we are intent on being caged by fear and distrust. Paint us in the rich soil of your word that we might blossom and bloom. Keep the wind under our wings so we can fly to the heights you envision for us. Have your way with us, God. Have your way with us. Amen. 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 So let us turn the light inward and let us examine our hearts and our souls and bring those things that we know are not of God. Let us confess these to God so we can receive cleansing. So take a few moments now for that self-examination and confession. Now, hear what Jesus has to say, and whatever Jesus says is good currency, you can take it to the bank. In the Gospel of John, chapter 8, 34, he says this. I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a child belongs to it forever. So if the son, referring to himself, if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. In the name of the Father and of the Son, you are free. You are forgiven. We are forgiven. And let me hear you say amen to that good and great news. Amen. We are amen. 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 A louder amen than that, Brother Litchmore. Amen. All right. Amen. So as forgiven people, let us join in the very prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Now it's time for our children's time. I'm going to be inviting Sister Lichmore to come. And, and um, we'll have the singing of Jesus Loves the Little Children. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> That's Brenna. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jesus loves the little children All the children of the world Red and yellow, black and right They are precious in his sight Jesus loves the little children of the world One more time One. Jesus loves the little children all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. Amen. Good job. Good job, Bryn. So all the children who are joining with us this morning, I would like to say good morning and come to your phone. Open your camera so I can see you. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Yes, all the children are here. I'm so happy to see you. I'd like all, the, good morning, Bren. You have done a wonderful job. So this morning, I know that we have started our vacation. And this morning, I want to talk to you about who you are and how brave and strong you are. So let me keep, so all the children who are with us this morning, I want to hear you say, I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. Great job. Good morning. So this one, I want to tell you a story about a little boy by the name of David. And David was living in a country where his people were at war, the Israelites and the Philistines. And some of us would imagine, I want you to picture all the number of people you see marching on the street. Many thousands of people marching on the street. So one of those army look like all of those people that you saw marching on the street. And while they were marching on the street, there were people who were so afraid. And there are some who wondered, what can I do? What can I do? So this morning, I want to let you know that you are strong and you are brave and God is on your side. So guess what happened? David had a number of brothers and three of his older brothers went to the war with the Philistine. And of course, some of us have friends and relatives who have gone away to Afghanistan and different places to fight. And your parents were wondering, when is my child going to come home? When will my child? I hope my child is okay. But at that time, Jesse, who was David's father, had the privilege, had the opportunity to send his son, David, go check on your brothers. If it is now, we cannot check on our brothers, our fathers, and our parents who are away fighting in army. So he said, okay, and when you're going, take some food. So he took food for three of his brothers, and his father said, and take some for the army general too. So David went down there. And when he got there, he saw they were in a, a valley. So they were on either side. And when David went down there, he heard them talking about this man who had presented them with a challenge. And his name was Goliath. And he said, send out someone to fight me. Sense of, and all of them were afraid of this big giant, you know, big, bigger than big bird, a big giant. And David said, hmm, why is he talking like that? He doesn't have the privilege. He says, send them out. And he, how he's going to cut them down suddenly. And David said, you don't have the right to be talking like that about God's people. Can you imagine? And I'm sure some of us have seen and heard about 
two different races. And Brian, I want you to listen to this. Have you watched the march that has been in different cities in New York City where a crowd of people marching about Black Lives Matter? No. Yes. Yes. Large group of people. And what happened to some of them? Um, they died because of coronavirus. Some died of coronavirus? Yes. How else have other people died? Have you ever seen anybody being beaten and they die? Because of the police officers in the Civil War? Oh, yes. Yes, because of the police officers that have been beating and killing them. Yes. And guess what? They are valuable. And they, what do you think they think? They think that all these lives do not, are not valuable. So just like how you hear Goliath speaking, some of them spoke that way and they demean us. But guess what? David went out and he said, I will not have you speak to God's people about that. And David was a little boy, just like many of you. He was very young. And when his brother heard him talking, get out to the front and start discussing with the soldier, the brother come and said, are you out of your mind? A little boy like you, you should be back home. Should be back home taking care of your father's sheep and should be minding your own business. But David said, God is on my side. And I will not allow that giant Goliath to talk to us as if we are not human or if we have no value. What David was saying, we, God is on our side and God is our help and we are valuable. David was brave. And why was David feeling that way? Who was on David's side? God. God. And who was going to help David to be successful? God. God. Did David think he couldn't do it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so David had the confidence in God. David was brave. He was courageous. And he knew that God was on his side. He was, he was just a little boy. But he has a high hope. He had confidence in God that he would overthrow that giant Goliath. And he wouldn't let anybody belittle him. His brother was telling him, you're just a little boy, go home. So I want to say to you children this morning, you must be strong, be brave, and let nobody belittle you. Let nobody say any mean or unkind things to you. Because who is on your side? God. God is on your side. And your voice, as little as you, you as little and young as you are, you have a strong, powerful voice. And your words matter. You can do things because who is on your side? God. God is on your side and you can. So what I want us to say to you must set your goals that you can achieve what I can and I am proud to be me. I want you to go from here saying that God is on my side and I can achieve all that I set my mind to. I know many of us are locked down. We're away from school on the vacation. But you can do anything you set your mind to. So I want you this morning to close your eyes with me. We are going to pray because God is on our side. And anything that you set your mind to, God is going to help you. Amen. 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 Dear God, we thank you for your blessing and your power. We thank you for the God who has been helping the people from long ago, from the Israelites, and now we are in a city, New York City, we are in a country, America, and I want you, God, to help all the people, most of all, help the children to recognize that their voice matter. They are strong, they are brave, and they can achieve anything they set their mind to achieve. God bless you. See you next week.
Amen. 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 Brain, you want to give us one more verse of one more line of Jesus loves the little children? Jesus loves the little children of the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Brain. I just love the way she does it. Uh, the way she does it, it makes me, it makes me wonder if Jesus have any love for these bigger children. But she, she puts so much passion in it that it seems as though Jesus only loved the little children. But Brian, I just want to let you know that Jesus loves the little children equally as he loves his big children too. Thank you so very much for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, Bye. All right. Okay. The, all, all tes, the scripture reading will be will be done by Sister Tom. Praise and peace, everyone. The Old Testament reading is taken from First Samuel chapter 17, 19 to 27. First Samuel 17, 19 to 27. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning, David left the flock with a shepherd loaded up and set out, as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as, many, as the army was going out to its battle position, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines, and greeted his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine, champion of God, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. When the Israelites saw the man, they all ran from him in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his father's family from taxes in Israel. Mm -hmm. David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and remove this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had heard saying and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. The second reading comes from the, the gospel, which comes from Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 21. Luke 4, 14 to 21. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in the synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to the breed. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he, been, and he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. Thanks be to God. Our announcements are as follows. The food program ministry continues on Tuesdays between 12 to 2.30 p.m. There are no prepared meals, groceries only. This ministry serves all those in need, the community at large, as well as our congregants. 
So do get the word out and don't be shy about getting the help you may need. Our Bible study and prayer will continue through the summer. We will not be having the usual summertime break. So do be intentional about being a part of this group where learning, growth, and fellowship takes place. We have a 2 p.m. and a 7.30 p.m. study on Wednesdays at, with one hour of prayer sandwich in between at 6.30 p.m. This is an open invitation. All who are interested may join either class as well as our time of prayer. The access information is to be found on our website. I do invite Sister Rosemary Malcolm as she comes with some Women's Day announcements. Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace. Um, I'm Rosemary Malcolm, at, along with Marilyn Drew, your co-chair for Women's Day 2020. And what a year it's been thus far. Um, however, in lieu of the pandemic, both um, so, um, the rate for rate with the racial issues and the COVID-19, I feel so blessed to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Just a brief update on the current status of Women's Day for 2020. From my perspective, every day is Women's Day. I personally feel, and as well as Marilyn, also feel that we are truly blessed to be in the presence of great women. And we want to just celebrate your greatness. This is why these Women's Day celebrations for September 27 will be postponed until um, preferably March of 2021, which is a month that recognizes the, um, the great contributions of our women. And the reason why we have postponed, decided to postpone Women's Day for September 27 is, as we are all aware, our nation is that unrest. It's full of uncertainties, and we're facing a possible possibility that's been predicted that there may be another outbreak of COVID-19 this fall. And if we were to go ahead with the celebration in September, there would be limited attendance um, limited attendance due to compliance with social distancing. There will be no after celebration in the fellowship hall. There would be no choir amongst other things. And we want to be, we want to um, recognize all the women of the church and make sure it's beneficial to all. However, we are continuing with the living water and um, for the, the living water, which is the dime filled bottles that totals a hundred dollars. And for those of you who are uh, who have, have who are ready to turn them in, we have two options for you. Marilyn has willingly volunteered to um, assist with coming to those of your homes that are unable to physically drop them off in the church. The other option is um, when available during the latter part of August, we will make arrangements to uh, make ourselves available for those of you who want to drop them off physically at the church going forward. We do not have a set um, date of termination. We want to continue it on until it's completed. And also, even though we're not having an uh, official Women's Day uh, during the month of September, we are st the church is still accepting the sacrificial offering. And you do not have to wait until the end of September to make your contribution. You can make weekly, monthly, uh, bi-weekly or monthly contribution by the same means you make your regular offering via Z um, Zelle, PayPal, or regular mail. And also for those of you who have not yet um, um, paid for your uh, prayer breakfast tickets, we're asking you if you are able to please do so. And I just want to say thank you for to everyone on um, the Women's Day Committee um, for your great contributions, your dedication, and your support. And may God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, um, Rosemary. I just want to, you know, I'm, I sound like a politician at this time, but I just want to say that I endorse everything that she has said. Um, it was just good sense and wisdom from God in terms of the step that has been taken 
And again, I just want to reiterate the part about the sacrificial gift. You know that um, it's a big giving and the church will benefit and uh, might be set back if that sacrificial, normal sacrificial giving isn't received. So I encourage you to maintain this. Amen. Uh, I have, I just, I don't have a lot of announcement. I just want to share with you that um, Sister Sandra Dubois lost her youngest brother. So this is a very challenging time for her. So I just want to let you all know, for those of you who do not yet have this information, just to reach out and to give her some encouragement and support at this time. And having said that, that takes care of the announcements. And I want to invite Dominique to um, sing the hymn of preparation, Total Praise. Lord, I will lift my eyes to the hills, knowing thy help is coming from Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dominique. Thank you. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. 
Let us come before God with a prayer before I start my message. Oh, Father God, thank you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you, God, for having created us and fashioned us in your own image. Thank you, God. We lift our hearts in total praise to you. And now, God, as we prepare for this message, I ask God that you will help us all to fix our eyes on what you have to say to us today, to help us, God, to decrease so that you can have all of our attention. Speak, Lord, through your servant. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, may all of these, God, be acceptable to you. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So we're going to talk about flying high today. And um, I'll just share with you that on Friday, when we were doing the worship prep, and Marsha asked me um, to remind her of the name of the sermon, and I said, flying high. And as soon as I said that, I started to chuckle. And all the others started to chuckle because we we're looking at the connotations what flying high means in our culture. So let me just let you know and put you at ease that no, I'm not going to speak about um, the, the, the culture's way of flying high and I'm not making any reference to the green plantation that we have in Jamaica. We're talking about flying high under the power and faith in God. Amen? So it was in February of 2012 that I heard a story which significance has stayed with me ever since and which I often refer to when I have to do some self-check. And so I had attended a retreat at that time and it was a compass retreat um, which is a ministry of the New York Annual Conference, which is extended to newly commissioned pastors. And the focus of this particular retreat was on prison ministry. And so among our speakers, we had four or five previously incarcerated men and women. There were four men actually and one woman. Their lives had been transformed through the power of Christ whilst they were in prison. And they were now doing great things in God's vineyard. And the testimonies were all very powerful and riveting. But the one that has stayed with me through the years is the testimony of the man who introduced me to the fable of the eagle that thought it was a chicken. And you have heard this table before because we have spoken about it on different occasions. But this part you didn't hear about the person who shared that fable with me. He said that he came from a privileged background. He says he didn't have any of the excuses that many of his fellow prisoners had. He says, my father was always there at home. My father had a good and a secure job, and he gave me good examples of what a father should be. He said the same thing went for his mother. She was a great mom, and she also gave him good examples of what a mom is. He said that he had all the opportunities that were necessary to succeed. But he said, I chose to hang with the wrong crowd. He said, I can't blame my situation on anything other than, and this is what he said, because I took my notes. He said, I forgot who I was. I got lost in the person I had become and the company I surrounded myself with and believed that I was stuck with what I had become. Did you hear that? Let me say it again. He says, I can't blame my situation on anything other than this. I forgot who I was. 
got lost in the person I had become and the company I surrounded myself with and believed that I was stuck with what I had become. And then in sharing his testimony, he told us this fable that he heard from one of the speakers when he was attending a Kairos prison ministry event in the prisons. And he says, for him, this fable was a game changer. And it goes like this. A chicken farmer had found an eagle's egg. And not wanting to leave it where he found it, because he was fearful that the mother, something had happened to the mother and the mother might not return, he took the egg and he carried it to his chicken farm and he put it with his hands so that they could sit on it and keep it warm until the egg hatched. And so the young eagle came forth and of course he grew up with all the other chickens. And whatever the chickens did, the eagle did too. You see, he thought he was a chicken just like them. And since the chickens could only fly for a short distance, the eagle also learned to fly only for a short distance. And he only did this because he thought that that was what he was supposed to do. So that was what he continued to do. And so as a consequence of all of this, that was all he was able to do. And then one day, one day as he's there flying low with the chicken, he happened to look up and he saw this bird flying very high in the sky. And he said to the hens, who is that? Look how he soars. And the hens look it up and they say, oh, that's the eagle. He's the king of the birds, they told him. They say, he belongs to the sky. We, we belong to the earth. We are just chickens. And so the eagle lived and died as a chicken, for that is what he thought he was. He never realized for one minute that he was an eagle and that he could have soared to the same great heights that he saw the eagle soar. That's a sad story, isn't it? All this while he was an eagle and he thought he was just a chicken. And the gentleman who was telling this story, he said that it jolted him. This was the game changer and it brought him back to his senses. He said he looked around at the prison environment that he had spent at that time 10 years in. And he said, I am an eagle. What am I doing here? I refuse to die like a chicken. And that was the beginning of his journey out of the darkness of wrong choices and failures into the new creation he had now become. Let's talk about the eagles. How do eagles live? They fly high. And because they fly high, they have great visibility. They can see what chickens can't see. They soar, they are bold, and they are courageous and they are majestic and they are powerful and the eagles are invincible and nothing stops them. Have you ever seen a recipe for an eagle? Brother Lishmore, have you ever seen a recipe for an eagle? No, no. You know something? Fried eagle, curry eagle, jerk eagle, barbecued eagle, Big eagle, never. You will never see a recipe for an eagle. But guess what? You will find thousands and thousands of recipes on how to cook chicken. If you go to allrecipe.com, you will find 5,430 plus chicken recipes. Chickens become easy prey 
for our dinner table because they're easily caught. See, chickens stay low and chickens play it safe. They make a lot of noise, yes, a lot of clucking, squawking, and they seldom look up. You see, chickens have no vision for themselves. As long as they can find the occasional worm, they're happy. Why am I saying all of this? Where am I going with this? You see, the story of the eagle, the eagle I'm talking about that didn't know it was an eagle, it parallels too often, way too often, the story of many of the 240 million Christians in the United States of America. Why do I say that? Because if we were soaring high as eagles, our culture, our society would be different. You see, when we don't know who we are, we will settle for whatever others tell us that we are. And we will settle for what they say we can't be and what we can't do. When you don't know who you are, you settle for everybody's version of what you can do and what you can't do. You settle for whatever is expedient. Isn't that true? When you don't know who you are, you let your circumstances dictate what you can't be and what you can't do. And when you don't know who you are, you pay a price and you end up in the wrong places with the wrong crowd doing the wrong things. And you end up missing opportunities that's right before you because you don't know who you are. And then we live, instead of being conquering Christians, we live in defeatist mode. We live like chickens instead of soaring like eagles. So today we're going to do some bird watching. We're going to look at an eagle. We're going to look at one turkey and a whole lot of chickens right there in the well-known story of David and Goliath. Eagles soar, they fly high, they do little things great, and they do big things great. They love greatly, they live expectantly, they live hopefully, and they live fully. So the question that we all have to ask ourselves today, are we a chicken, an eagle, or a turkey? The good thing is that if we fall in the category of chicken or turkey, that can change. That's the good news. So I want you to turn to your Old Testament reading because not all of the story that I'm going to be looked at was read. So take a minute and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now, most of us learned this story when we were knee high in Sunday school. And it's a story that intrigues us because it is a match between two people. One big giant of a man, a bully, nine feet tall, and he's decked to the hilt in military armor. And the other player on the scene is a teenage boy a shepherd boy named David who could not have been more at, than 15 years at the time and whose outward defense against, and I say outward, know the word, his outward defense against this nine foot tall bully were, was five stones and a slingshot. So if ever there was an unequally balanced match, that was mm -hmm. it. And so he shows up on the battlefield. He hears this loud mouth bully of a giant taunting and teasing the army of Israel. Now remember the army of Israel is the army of the people of God yes. who was chosen by God, who mm -hmm. was called by God. Yes. The Israelites through whom all the nations would be blessed. God's prized possession. What was the army of God doing? 
-hmm. Guess what? They were running around like chickens. He's coming to get us. What shall we do? He is so big. He is so bad. He is mean. Yes, yes. They forgot who they were and whose they were. Mm -hmm. And when you look at chapter 17, <laughs> verses 8, 9, and 10, the Bible tells us this about the Philistine. He said, the Philistine came out and he shouted to the Israel army. He says, I defy the army of Israel. I will not fight the whole army. Send me a man and let us fight against each other. If I win, you are mine. If your man wins, we are yours. That was the offer. And what was the army of Israel's response? Including the leader, the king? Well, verse 11 says this, that Saul, the king, and all the Israelites, they were dismayed and terrified. From the top to the bottom, from the head to the tail, the leader is running scared, so there is no leadership, no game plan. They flew so low, they didn't know how to rise up and respond. They were paralyzed by fear, for their focus was on the size of the giant rather than on the power and greatness of their God. And in verse 16, we learn that this went on not for one day or two days. It went on for 40 days. Goliath terrorized them for 40 days. And the Israelite army, they went to their bed afraid. And if they slept at all, they slept in fear. And they woke up afraid because they forgot who they were, whose they were, and what it is that they had. Anybody have any Goliaths in their life? Who or what is keeping you up at night? Who or what? are you afraid of? And who are you relying on? You see, the army of Israel was relying on itself. They forgot who they were and who they had. And so they couldn't fly. They left God out of the equation. They forgot that their God was mighty to save. And David shows up and he has no clue as to what was happening. But God did. And he was at the battle site only because his father had sent him to check on his brothers and to take some food for them and for the commander of their unit. And so David shows up on this scene and he witnesses this loudmouth bully challenging God's army and saw how he was terrorizing them. And so this is what David did. David did the math. And he's thinking, there is one man and his army, and there is our army and our one God. And as he thought about that, he says, game over. No match, no match, game over. And he asks these two questions. He says, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel. And then the other question was this in verse 26. It says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should be dissing and defying and disrespecting the army of the living God? In other words, he's saying, who is this godless man? Who gives this big bully, this loudmouth heathen, the right to challenge the armies of God? You see, church perspective, perspective. One man and his army, and David look at our army and our one God. You see, the Israel army, they saw a mighty giant when they looked at Goliath. You know what David saw? David saw a mortal man defying his almighty God. You know, when he asks those questions, he's also chiding 
the army, Saul's army, for being chicken, for being afraid of a mere man when they had God on their side. So the news got to Saul about David's questioning and readiness to fight and sent for him. But before that, let me just say something about Eliab, David's brother. Eliab heard David speaking to the men. He overheard his conversation and Eliab was hopping mad. It says in verse 28 that when Eliab heard David's conversation, instead of going and applauding his little brother, he burned with anger. And he accosted David and he said to him, you are a shepherd. Stay with your few sheep. What do you know about a man's world? How dare you come criticizing us? Who are you? Go home and mind sheep. You are too full of yourself. So what do we learn from this? We learn from this incident with Eliab that when you know that you're an eagle, because David knew what he was, that when you know that you're an eagle, when you know what you have, when you walk in the power and authority of God, there will always, always be those who will critique you and try to hold you back. You know why? Because they're chicken and they can't see what you can see. And because they can't see what you can see, you become open to criticism. Who do you think you are? Don't even try. You're too big for your britches. Church, chickens love company. They stay low and try to keep others just as low or lower. Chickens play it safe. They make a lot of noise, a lot of clucking and squawking, and they seldom look up. Chickens have no vision for themselves. As long as they can find the occasional worm, they are happy. And then we read a conversation that takes place in verses 32 to 40. Saul sends for him, and in verse 32, David assures him. 15-year-old kid, and he says to the king, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. And Saul hears what this lad is saying. And he says to him, you can't fight him. You are only a boy. What do you know about fighting? And in verse 34, David says, well, I have killed a bear. And I have killed a lion with my bare hands. He says, this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will, not maybe, not as I'm hoping, will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. When you know who you are, when you know who you are, church, and when you know who your God is, that is how we can stand up and be counted as eagles. You know what he said? He says, the battle is the Lord's. And so like in what he heard said, go for it. But you need to wear protective military garb. And what does he do? He gives David all of his military wear. He gave him his own tunic, his coat of armor, and the bronze, bronze helmet, heavy duty stuff. And so David tries to walk in this. He says, no, can't do, this is not for me. He says, I can't wear these. He took them off. There's another lesson in the mix of this. And this lesson is more so for the older folks, including myself. The way we do things, is not the way that others have to do 
things. Our way of getting something done is not necessarily the only way. Two plus two may equal four, but so does one plus three and five minus one. And we are famous for giving people the green light to go. And then we policed every move and every turn while all along they're saying, I can't do it this way, it's holding me back. Did you hear me now? Hello? Hello? And so David <laughs> grabbed five moves. Amen, stone. amen. Amen, we hear you. You're hearing me, good. Yes. yes. So yes. David grabbed five smooth stones and he put them in his shepherd's bag. And with his sling, he approached the Philistine. He knew that the Lord was with him. He knew that the Lord, the mighty one to save was with him. He knew that the Lord, the mighty one to save and who will rejoice over him was with him. And the rest is history. You know, at face value, it seemed like an unequal watch, match rather. At face value, it seemed like an unequal match. But it's not, it was unequal, but not the way we think. It was not an unequal match for David, but for Goliath. You see, when God is in your fight, when God is in the ring with you, it changes the dynamics. It becomes God's battle and no one or nothing or no circumstances can stand up to the almighty God. Game over. And in verse 45 to 47, this is what David said to Goliath. He says, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord almighty the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. All of those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. Did you hear that, church? The battle is the Lord's. And when we know that God is in the ring with us, then the enemy, had better start running. Then the problems had better move over because who can stand against the servant of the mighty God? And David had the victory. Think about it. What are the chances of a young lad getting a bullseye, a dead ringer, using a slingshot, a slingshot, smack in the forehead of a nine-foot giant? What are the chances of this giant being so precisely hit that it knocked him out cold so as to have David finish him off with his sword? What are the chances of this happening? Had it not been for God. On David's own, his chances were zero. But with God in the mix, victory will always come at unexpected unexpected faces and at unexpected times. David had the victory because he had a friend in high places. David had the victory because he knew that with God, all things are possible. He knew that the God, the same God who delivered him from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear would have given him the uncircumcised Philistine for love. He had the victory, church. At the end of the day, David had the victory because he knew who he was. David had the victory because he had this deep relationship with God. He knew God. When he reflected on this God, he would cry out, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. 
David knew that his help came from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes up to the hill, he considered. And where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Those are the thoughts of an eagle church. That's how eagles think. They not only believe they can fly, they know it. Can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That was said by another eagle named Paul. And so when the insurmountable challenges in life rear their heads, the eagle's song is, my God is awesome. And when the problems and difficult places of life surmount the eagle like mountains, the eagle says, my God is awesome. He can move mountains. And when a curveball is thrown at the eagle and it fractures a wing, it doesn't succumb to it. It sings, my God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Mm -hmm. And when the eagle is tired and worn by the winds and tides of life, he sings, my God is awesome. He gives me strength where I have been weakened. So folks, young and old alike, do you know who you are? Do you realize that for the past several messages, I always bring that question in? Common question. And I'm not being redundant, but it's because we forget so easily. And it is not just us. It seems to have been a problem in the early church because when we read the epistles, we see that Paul keeps having the same problem with the various congregation. They forget all the time who they are. So we need to keep this in the forefront because we have three choices from this story. You know what the choices are? We can be an eagle, we can be a chicken or a turkey. We can be an eagle with the mindset of David, we can be a chicken with the mindset of the army, or we can be a turkey like Goliath. You see, a turkey makes a lot of noise. They are loud. They talk a lot. They come across as big and bold. But guess what? They have no substance. They're full of air and a small stove will knock them down. So if you are acting like a chicken, give it up. If you are behaving like a turkey, give it up and be the eagle that God has ordained you to be and fly high. I'm almost done. Why? Because 2000 years ago, a young man born in the humblest of circumstances, whose father was questionable, according to the folk, they said he was a jacket, that he was fathered by a soldier, his siblings thought he was crazy at one time. Folks call him a drunkard. You know, Luke 7, 34 tells us the son of man came eating and drinking. And you say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And others call him a devil. Some said he was demon possessed. And that story is John 8, 48. But it didn't matter. It didn't change this young man's purpose. You know why? Because he knew who he was. He had heard God say to him, you are my son in whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. And so having heard all of this, he was able to withstand the temptations of the devil, he returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. He returned to Nazareth. And on the Sabbath day, 
he walked into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up and read, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And that same young man, on a Friday afternoon, he was murdered on a cross so that you and I could soar like eagles. That we will be called children of God, of the Most High. Hmm? He paid it all, church, to light us up so that we could fly. So to all of us, this message is for myself as well. Let us fly high, church, and let our lives speak for what this young man did on the cross. May God add his blessings to these words. Amen. 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 We just want to give God thanks to our pastor for having brought such a powerful word. We all have got giants in our lives. Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's a loss of a job. And we tend to focus more on the giants than to think about the God that we have, the great God that we have, who is able to lift us up so that we can soar like eagles. Why don't we change our focus today? And rather than focusing on the giants in our lives, place our focus on the God that we have, who is able to raise us up like eagles. That's a powerful word. Thank you so much, Pastor. I do invite okay. um, Judy and McBurney with the, with the, um, the prayer response. Judian? Your grace and mercy has brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. And I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy has brought me through. Your grace and mercy has brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. And I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy has brought me through. Thank you for saving a sinner like me to tell the world salvation is free. There were times when I just didn't do right, but you, you watch over me all day and all night. Oh, your grace and mercy has brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. And I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy has 
brought me through your grace and mercy has brought me through. Amen. Amen. Let us come before God with the prayers of the people. O oh Lord, our God, we know that faithful, faithful is your name. As we draw near to you, God, we know that you draw near to us and we say, thank you, God. Thank you. But God, our thank you is so insufficient when we consider all that you have done for us. You have been our all in all. You have been and you are our redeemer. You are our sustainer. You are our rock, you are our savior, you are the lover of our soul. You have fought for us and you have provided for us. You have been our friend and so much more, God. And so we offer ourselves back to you as our response to your grace. And God, we are always so thankful that we can come to you at any time. We are thankful that we can that before a word is uttered on our lips that you already know our needs our wants and our petitions we come god ask you to show mercy on those of our family our church family and our families who are sick we come god and we pray that you will continue to strengthen those who are weak and to heal those bodies that are failing we want to lift up to you god those who are mourning we ask that you'll bring your comfortable or your comforting presence and that you'll bring your resurrection hope around them we ask god that you will pop in by sister nation and the brysons and sister dubois house and sinella and family's home and be their comforter and their peace and God, we come asking for those who are without jobs. We come asking that you will open the doors of opportunities for them. And for those, God, who have no shelter, we ask God that you will open doors that they can walk in and call home. And God, we see the dysfunction that is happening in our society. We hear, God, of the shooting and the looting and in particular, God, in Crown Heights, where your church is located, we are hearing of the increase in gun violence. And so, God, we pray. We pray, God, that through your power and your might, that all of this will cease. Change the hearts, God, of those who are intent on spilling blood. Change the hearts, God, so that they can change their hatred into love for one another. Change their hearts, God. Only your gospel can do that. So help us, God, to be loud and clear in sharing sin. We pray, God, for those who are experiencing broken relationships within their family unit, where we have parents not speaking to children and children not speaking to parents, and spouses who are looking at splitting, and friends and relatives who have stayed their distance. Lord God, we just pray that all of these things will cease wherever it is occurring and that all hurts will be relinquished. We pray, God, for your birthday celebrants, that in this time that you have afforded them, that they will grow in the grace and knowledge of you, and that in each passing day their delight in you, God, will be increased. And we remember Sister Grace Gilma. We know she had a birthday uh, yesterday or friday i think and so lord be with them all and god for your church we ask that you will fortify your church at bethany and that the mission feels god that within this hiatus we will come out stronger than before that we will seek the justice that you have called us to seek and that lord god we will move ahead to take care of those who are needy and those who are in want we know god that your power is our power 
We ask God that you will increase those who labor in our vineyard because there's so much that you have for us to do. And God, we lift up the very community that you have placed us in. May your will be done in this neighborhood and all over. We continue to pray, God, that the foolishness of those who govern will be put to rest and that the public servants and officials will do what is right in your eyes and not what is right in theirs. And God, we pray, oh Lord God, we pray for a revival in this land where hearts and minds will be turned to you in the millions. Oh God, the God who hears prayers, hear our prayers today. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. 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 I do invite Sister Dominique with the prayer response. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Amen. Amen. It's time for a stewardship moment uh, with Dr. Anthony. Hey, good afternoon. Stewardship is not only about giving, <clears throat> but receiving. We are blessed by God who always gives to us in so many ways. Loving us, caring, providing, sustaining, and protecting us. It is about giving thanks and praise to our creator, the Lord Almighty, for life and the joy of his presence. Be blessed in being a steward of the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 5, 22 to 23 verses states, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. As you prayerfully continue to support our church, you can mail your tithes and offerings to the church using a check or money order. Or electronically, you can use Zelle, send in to the email, BethanyUnitedBKLYN at gmail.com. That's BethanyUnitedBKLYN at gmail.com. You can also use PayPal by going to our website. You click on choose or select a page and you go to donations, tithes, and offerings. The, the website address is bethanyumcbk.org. That's bethanyumcbk.org. Thank you and blessings to all. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Anthony. A prayer of dedication. We thank you, God, for your kindness and for your provision. We seek God to do unto others as you have done for us. May the fruit of our, our labor, which we offer to you, play its part in honoring and growing your kingdom. We offer these in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Just before our mission statement, I just want to remind you, everyone, that there will be a time of fellowship following the, the morning's worship. We will get a chance to say hi to a few folks you have not seen or heard from um, in a while. Amen? Our, 
Please join me with the mission statement. As disciples of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, our mission, mission is to be, is to be demonstrators of his love, messengers, messengers of his gospel, and sharers, and sharers of his, his teachings. Our recessional hymn will be done by Sister Yvonne Stewart Armour, I Will Fly Away. Some bright morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away. To a land where joy shall never end, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away when the shadows of this life is all. I'll fly away like these birds from prison walls they fly. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, oh how glad and happy when we meet. I'll fly away, no more cold iron shackles on my feet, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away in the morning. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away, I'll fly away. Amen. 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 Go flying, Sis Avon. Thank you so much. Anybody ready to, if I had a wings like a dove, we're ready to start flying, right? When we leave this place, we're going to start flying high for God. Yeah. Pastor, I will pay your Christian. Pastor, I will pay your Christian voice. I heard somebody singing. Oh, that's what's Chris. Oh, God bless All right. you, Chris. All right. So you need to do that more often, though, right? Uh, okay. When he's with your wife. That was wonderful. All, All right. right. So receive the benediction. Now may the love of God and may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding and the fellowship and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit who causes us to fly. Be yours as you go through this week and remember who you are, flying high in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Amen. Amen.